Welcome to this webinar on optic nerve disease. I am Dr. Julie Rodman. Optic nerve head swelling or disc edema is a common finding in many pathologic conditions of the optic nerve. It results from a backup in axoplasmic flow through the retinal nerve fiber layer. As a result, we can see clinically a swelling and thickening of the RNFL. This slide shows papilledema. Papilledema is edema of the optic nerve due to elevated intracranial pressure. On OCT, you will see an elevated optic nerve head with a smooth internal contour as illustrated here. You will also see an area of subretinal hyporeflective fluid, which we call a lazy or recumbent V pattern. This is specific for true disc edema and you will not see it in other forms of pseudodisc edema. This is another slide of disc edema as a result of idiopathic intracranial hypertension. On the left-hand side, you can see the smooth internal contour that we discussed in previous slides. On the right-hand side, you can see what we call an inward angulation of the peripapillary RPE Brooks membrane layer as illustrated by the blue arrows. This inward angulation does not occur in other causes of disc edema. Optic nerve head drusen is often mistaken for papilledema, however, it is a congenital abnormality. Optic nerve drusen are abnormal globular collections of protein and calcium which accumulate in the optic nerve. On OCT, optic nerve head drusen will appear as an elevated optic nerve head with a lumpy, bumpy internal contour, which you can see here. It looks quite different in comparison to the slides on true papilledema that I showed you before. Optic disc drusen have also been referred to as congenitally elevated or anomalous discs. The final entity that I will discuss is that of optic disc pit and associated maculopathy. Optic disc pit is a rare congenital anomaly of the optic nerve head. Associated maculopathy is commonly reported. OCT of optis, optic disc pit maculopathy can include subretinal fluid, as illustrated here with the red arrow, and schesis-like cavities, as illustrated by the blue arrow. The outer retinal layers are often affected, extending from the disc to the macula. On the top three OCTs, the pathophysiology behind optic disc pit maculopathy is illustrated. The pathophysiology is thought to involve fluid originating from the vitreous or subarachnoid space, entering through the optic nerve head, through the pit, resulting in a separation of the outer retinal layers. Fluid can then move from the outer retinal space to the inner retinal layers, which results in the maculopathy that we described before. I hope that you enjoyed this webinar on optic disc anomalies, and I look forward to seeing you at future webinars.